This is an LED floodlight, a little work light that I got from Asda, which is the, well, it's owned by Walmart now, but it's a big UK uh, supermarket chain. And I just got it to see what the quality was like. And the first thing I'm noticing here is that it's got discrete LEDs in here as opposed to the standard cob sort of array. And I'm wondering if it's using the built-in, uh, you know, regulator circuitry on those. I'm going to turn this on, and I will be warning you, there doesn't seem to be much smoothing, so it will be a bit flickery, so I'll do it briefly. Pairs out a modest amount of light, uh, doesn't really shimmer to the naked eye, but to the camera it may show shimmer. So, things worth noting. Uh, it comes with proper plug, it comes with rubber flex, HO5 rubber flex, which is a good choice for the UK. I'm just going to take this off, stand off, because it's just a wee bit bulky here. Uh, the HO5 flex is what's normally recommended for outdoor use in the UK, but it's also recommended for site use because it's a very robust cable, as opposed to PVC. Let's get that out of the way. So let's uh, get the back off this and take a look inside. It's worth noting that instead of a toggle switch, it's a push-in, uh, click-on, click-off. I wonder why they chose that particular type. So let's get the screws out the back and see if there's anything in the back at all. If it's a driverless chip, it will probably just have a terminal block in the back and nothing else. But all will be revealed once we get this off. So is it driverless or has it got a driver? It's got a driver by the look of it. Unless that's just suppression circuitry. What does it say in it? It says input 110 240 AC. Oh, and it says 277 AC for North America only. Oh, why not here? Uh, output 23 to 30 volts. So it is, it's 330 milliamp constant current. So it's based on a series string of one watt chips. Let's uh, get the front open then. I'm going to have to, I've already tried, uh, I'm going to have to take this handle off before I can get in there, so let's uh, strip the thing to bits completely. I was kind of uh, wondering if it was going to, you know, have a better power factor or, you know, just generally be better overall, but I tested it and the power factor in this, it was showing about 12 watts power consumption, but only about 0.65 watt power factor and from the shimmer and flicker, I would guess that maybe it's uh, got a one of the little uh, buck regulator power supplies, but I could be wrong. So let's get this uh, handle off for a start and get it out of the way. I could theoretically have tilted it over at this point, but I don't think it would, so, oh, that's tight. The flex alone uh, is a refreshing change in the little stub of the PVC flex that usually comes out. I also was kind of expecting one of the little potted modules in there, but it's not. Uh, it's the little plastic, uh, we'll pop that open as well afterwards and take a look inside it. So to get the front cover off, well that comes out easier than the other ones. I'll just destroy this completely, will I? So is it going to be a little circuit board or is it going to be an actual dedicated LED array is the question. It's quite Quite well sealed on. Oop. Sound of scattering screws everywhere. These screws aren't put in too deeply. Is it going to reveal anything exciting or is it just going to be something rather predictable? I would say it's going to be a circuit board, like a little cob array type thing, or a little array of LEDs, much like the driverless chips, but uh, with just the standard uh, soldered chips. Uh, just the individual chips. It is. It's just the sort of aluminium. It's got, it does uh, have the raised plinth that's been machined, which is quite nice for good thermal connection. And then it's just got these uh, nine chips, individual chips, as opposed to the one. I wonder why they used that. Maybe they get uh, more predictable quality by using these uh, chips on their own. But yeah, that's quite interesting. So I'm just going to pop the power supply out now. Just disintegrate this thing into mints completely. Ooh, kind of chewy. Ooh, I've kind of regretted pulling that out now. I think it was glued, but it's not anymore. This is where I'm going to wish I had my spudger with me again. I'm going to have to remember in future, always travel with your spudger. 
So what's this going to reveal? It's kind of already half off the oven itself. Okay, it looks fairly complicated. And it looks like it's got, you know, fairly, you know, it's been built. I'm just going to actually short this out if I can find it. Oh no, it is, it's, is it a buck regulator? It's got lots of filtering. But it's got this sort of separation that does sit, no, it, it can't because it's got a class Y capacitor for su filter suppression. Um, so what's the chip it's based on? Where is my little, where is my illuminated magnifying glass? Have I just lost that? I, I have, I've put it somewhere else. I've put it out of reach and I don't, hold on a second. I've got my microphone clipped onto the baseball cap at the moment, so I had to say that's what the noise was. Um, and why I had to take that off before going across. It's a bright power 3319MB. But it looks like it's uh, got an external transistor on it to drive that. So it looks as though it's a fairly decent quality power supply in there. With a bit of extra filter in the output as well in the form of these ferrite beads plus... Oh, that was a diode with a ferrite bead just at the bottom of it and then a capacitor. So it does have a modest amount. I mean, I'm surprised it was flickering then so visibly. That's odd. Maybe it was just the intensity was just making the, the camera catch that shutter flicker. And the power supply itself just looks like fairly conventional circuitry, almost a, a step back for bright power. You kind of expect their power supplies to be very minimalist, just the bare chip in its own. But by moving the transistor off, uh, it probably helps the heat dissipation and avoids the chip getting too hot, having to handle too much current. Yeah, it looks okay, actually. And uh, certainly the amount of light this thing puts out is very acceptable. So yeah, it looks relatively okay. I'm just uh, looking at that fuse going across there and thinking the soldering here is actually so close to the other terminal it's almost shorting out that fuse protection. Uh, maybe it's lost a point for that. But yeah, interesting enough it looks quite a nice little light.